in his glory shall be revealed. Praise God. And you know that is the truth. And this is the title of our sermon, as I said before, the glory that is to be revealed. For something or someone to be revealed, it first have to be concealed. Hidden from view, took away somewhere. Being veiled, being covered, waiting for that moment to be unveiled, waiting for that moment to be uncovered. And my prayer for you today, my brothers and sisters, that the glory that is in you might be exposed to the world, must be made known unto the world. The Bible say Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So he is the glory that we are speaking about. And that glory is in you. When we go into the book of Colossians 1, 23 to 27. Amen. Colossians 1. And we are reading 23 to 27. Praise Master Jesus. Glory to God. Anybody is there? Yeah, to 27. To 27. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is on the heaven, whereof I called and made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of life in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. So, so the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory is in you, child of God. Yes, the glory is in you. Hallelujah. Please, Master Jesus. But that glory don't benefit no one if that glory is not being revealed. What do I mean when I say that glory being revealed? If your light don't shine before men and man doesn't see your good works, how oh, then will they give glory to your Father in heaven? How shall they glorify your Father in heaven? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Many live and they die without that glory that is in them being revealed. Yes, I say many. Many, and I mean many. And may that never be a portion in Jesus' name. For we were meant to shine as children of God. So tell your neighbor. Tell somebody you were meant to shine. You were meant to shine. Again, I say many live for a long period of time on planet earth. 
as believer, as Christian, but never truly shine. They have not fulfilled their full potential in Christ Jesus. They have not become who they supposed to have become in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the glory that's supposed to be revealed in them didn't reveal in them. You may not know that that is the case, but I believe that is the truth. Somebody once said, the cemetery is the richest place on earth. For in it lies many unfulfilled dreams. Many unfulfilled potential. Many great ideas and invention are you know glory to God bless his holy name so basically what I'm saying that many people they died with great ideas with a lot of potential that they didn't get to bring to the forefront. Amen? So I believe the emphasis that I'm emphasizing on is that there's a glory that is in the child of God and that glory need to be revealed. Amen? That glory need to be made known. Praise Master Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor as I lift my hands in worship as I bless your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor, as I lift my hands in worship, as I bless your holy name, for you are great. You do miracles so great, and there is no one else like you. And there is no one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. And there is no one else like you. And there is no one else like you. Hallelujah. I'm going back into the word of God. I'm going into the book of 1 Peter. And I'm reading from verse 5. 1 Peter 5. And I'm reading verse... One, he said, The elder which are among you, I exhort who am as an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Amen. I think I need to read it again. He said, The elder which are among you. I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He said he's a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. What glory is he speaking about? When we go into the book of Roman, Eight, hallelujah, and we are reading verse 18. He said, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. The glory. Which shall be revealed in us. Where will that glory be revealed? It shall be revealed 
in us, in you and me, believers in Christ. Hallelujah, we are going back into the book of 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah, 2 Corinthians 4. And we are reading verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4, and I'm reading verse 17. For our light affliction, which is both for a moment, work for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory, a far more exceeding weight of eternal glory. And the last Bible text we will look at for now, just to lay a foundation is in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 2. And we are reading verse 10. Praise Master Jesus. Hebrews chapter 2. And we are reading verse 10. For it become him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. If you notice all the scripture that we have read so far speak about glory, but also speak about suffering, that suggests there is a price to be paid for the glory to be revealed in you. Whether you accept it or not, that is the truth. For what saith the scripture? In most cases, for we know that God is sovereign. So he can work outside of the box. Amen. But the Bible said if you suffer with him, speaking about the Lord Jesus, then you shall reign with him. Just follow my train of thought for a moment. I am going somewhere with the message. So that is evidently clear what it is that I'm pointing out. That there is a glory in every believer. Every born again Christian. Hallelujah. And it's for you and me to discover. And uncover the Christ in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So this is a process, child of God. That all will have to go through. Nevertheless, as I said before, God is sovereign. And he work everything according to the counsel of his own will. But my brothers and sisters, just to bring your attention back to the very topic of my sermon today, that there is a glory that is in you. And that glory is to be revealed. The glory that is to be revealed. Every star differ in glory. You may have heard I said this so many times before, but truth and a whole need to repeat it time and time again in order for it to register in your heart. There is something distinctive, something unique. Hallelujah. Something awesome. Glory to God. Bless his holy and awesome name. Be magnified. Be glorified. Be exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise. Masha Kalabu Soto Shebi Vilibisete. Enkinti Shebi Lidibisete Biba. Maleta Siliti Bi Biba Koto She Kalaraba Sata She Kalaraba. Hanti Shebi Bilibi. Linti Sebi Kalarabu Soto She Kalaraba. Maloto Sovi Vilibisete Biba. 
Malata sata ye let the Bible be unconto mashakaraba. Ye the glory that is to be revealed. Makoto she kalaraba soto she Bible be inkorobu soto. Mama she Bible be inkorobu soto she Bible. Makataraba sata ye. Latisha be kalaraba sata ye. Me baba baba ba shakata ye the glory that is to be revealed. Hallelujah. Glorious, distinctive, and unique that God have hidden in you. God have hid it, it in you. Yes, it is hidden. It is concealed. Waiting to be discovered. Waiting to be uncovered. Waiting to be unveiled. Waiting to be make known. The Bible say, I've been these treasures in earthen vessel. That the excellency of the power might not be of us, but of God. That the excellency of the power might not be of us, but of God. I'm still speaking about the glory that is to be revealed. Hallelujah, the glory that is to be revealed. And you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the true one. And unto thee I lift my voice in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And you are glorious. And worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the true one. And unto thee I left my voice in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. Second Corinthians. And I'm reading from verse 9 to 16. Second Corinthians 2. And I'm reading from verse 9 to 16. Praise Master Jesus. For to this end also did I write. That I might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also for, if I forgive anything. To whom I forgive it for your sake, forgive I it in the person of Christ. Let's sit and should get an advantage of us, for we are not, hallelujah, ignorant of his device. Furthermore, when I come to Tros, to preach Christ's gospel, a door was opened unto me of the Lord. And I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Now thank be unto God, which always caused us to triumph in Christ. And make manifest the Sabbath of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet Sabbath of Christ. In them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the Sabbath of death unto death. And to the other the Sabbath of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these, the glory that is to be revealed, the glory that is to be revealed. What is the glory? Who is the glory? And where is the glory? And how shall this glory be revealed? What glory am I talking about? Christ. In you the hope of glory. Understand that Christ means the anointed one. The anointed one. He wants to manifest 
himself in you, child of God. He want to manifest himself through you, child of God. And you, and you, and you, and you, all of us, Hallelujah, as we go back into the word of God. Hallelujah, we are going into the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 12, 1 to 10. And I think I will just paraphrase Hebrews 12, 1 to 10. Let her read. Uh, you can read that in your own quiet time because of time. Hebrews 12, 1 to 10. But I will read a part of it just to give you an insight of what it's saying. Amen. It says, Wherefore, we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despite the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god for consider him that endures such contradiction of sin against himself lest you become weary and faint in your mind. You have not yet resist. Hallelujah. Unto blood. Striving against sin. And you are forgetting the exaltation. Which speaketh unto you. As dear children. My son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Now faint when thou are rebuke of him. For whom the Lord loveth. He chasteth. And. He is courage every son whom he receive. If you endure chastisement, God dealt with you as with son. For what son is it that the father chastened not? But if you are without chastisement, we are of all our partakers. Hallelujah. Then you are bastard and not son. Furthermore, you have fathers in our flesh. Which correct us. And we gave them. Hallelujah. Reverence shall we. Not much. Be in subjection unto the father of spirit and live. For they verily for a few days. Chasing us after their own pleasure. Both he for our profit. That we might partake. Or might be partakers. Of his holiness. Amen. That we might be partakers. Of his holiness. I'm still speaking. On the topic. The glory that is to be revealed. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said. Without holiness none shall see the Lord. And the pure in heart. Shall see God. The glory that is to be revealed. Light is. Glory. That's what Paul the Apostle saw on the road going to Damascus. Or should I say Saul of Tarsus? That's what he saw. And the Bible define it as the glory of the Lord. And the shepherd, hallelujah, that was in the field tending their flock. And the night that Jesus Christ was born, that's what they saw. When the angel appeared unto them. Amen. They saw a light. And they defined it as the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. So who was watching over the flock by night? It was the shepherd. And they have seen an angel came upon them. Hallelujah. I'm saying, child of God, you are the light of the world. Jesus was the light of the world. And now he's saying to you and I that we are the light of the world. There is a light in you. And that light that is in you is Christ. Amen. Christ is the hope of glory. Christ, hallelujah, is that light. And that light is in you to be revealed. Yes. Hallelujah. That is the person of Christ. 
that Christ may dwell in our heart by faith. Hallelujah. So that which is on the inside must manifest itself on the outside. Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3. I believe we all know what is written there. And he said that arise and shine for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So then again you see it is light. And the light is the glory. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The understanding of glory. Defining glory. We can say glory is the anointing. Glory is the manifestation of the power of God. The Bible said this beginning of miracles that Jesus did and manifest his glory. Amen. So when he turned the water into wine in Galilee. Hallelujah. That was the beginning of the manifestation of his glory. Hallelujah. And the disciple believe in him, say the word of God. No wonder Jesus have said, we should let our light so shine before men that they might see our good work and glorify our Father in heaven. Praise God. So glory is light. And light is glory. The Bible says God cover himself with light as with a garment. And God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. The glory is the light of God. The glory is the anointing of God. The glory is the power of God. And the Bible said we were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the marvelous light of his dear son. That is where we are, spiritually speaking. Amen. Amen. But the word said that through more tribulation, we shall enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. This is kind of not so easily understood. Because we are in the kingdom. But yet there is an entering into the kingdom. Amen. So. We are in. But we need to enter in. So I believe the entering. According to the word of God. Because the moment you believe and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. You were translated into the kingdom of his dear son. But nevertheless, the word of God is saying, through more tribulation, we shall enter in to the kingdom of God. So although you are in, there's still an entering into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The glory that is to be revealed. Wherein you begin to manifest the power of God. We see that's what Jesus did. And the Bible said he manifests his glory. So for you to manifest the glory. You have to demonstrate the spirit and the power of God. That reside within you as a believer. Because Christ meant the anointed one. And from Christ in you. He is the hope of glory. Praise Master Jesus. So by the things he began to do. 
the marvelous things we begin to do when he have said, We who believe in him, the works that he have done, he shall also do. The works that he have done, we shall also do, and even greater works because he have gone to his father. Now something is wrong. And it's not wrong on his part. But on our part because less than 10% of the body of Christ is letting their light shine in such a manner. The way it ought to shine that man might see and give glory to our Father in heaven. They are not manifesting the glory which is in them. Hallelujah. The glory is not being revealed. Now whose fault is it? I know it is not Jesus' fault. It got to be yearns and minds for God about doing good works that we should walk in them. Are you walking in the good works that were ordained that you should walk in? Or is it that you are walking contrary to your calling? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know my time is almost out, so I won't be able to finish the message. But this is what I'm trying to pinpoint, to highlight Shaila God, that there is a glory in each and every believer so long as you are in Christ. And that glory that is on the inside need expression on the outside that man might see your good work or see your light and give glory to your Father in heaven. And Jesus is saying, this is how my Father is being glorified. Amen. When our light shine, that man might see and give glory to our Father in heaven. So, hallelujah. So, I believe what we need to do as children of the Most High God. We need to continue to press in. Amen. We need to press in. Hallelujah. The Bible says that through much tribulation we shall enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. There's an entering. I'll do you already in. There's an entering. Because Jesus said, Hallelujah. That he that overcome it, he that overcome it, he that overcome it. So there is things that you 